Welcome to Studio 5. We are fixing our focus on uplifting music in this week's Studio 5. We're following the children of some legends in the gospel industry with their new reality show called Grown in Gospel. Then we're headed back to Toby Mac's Hits Deep Tour, where we're going to sit down with recording artist John Reddick. And from there, we head to the Passion Conference in Atlanta to sample this year's new album from the ministry. And we're doing all of this as we count down this week's top five stories in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are the first two. At number five. I got baptized on my birthday. So I was reborn on my birthday. And that was May 11th of 2022. So from there, I was like, you know, just start taking the steps that I knew, which was more of the truth. Reality TV and social media star Black China, born Angela White, making headlines everywhere as she opens up about her faith. I just got sick and tired of being sick and tired of the same repetitive things. So I'm like, let me dig deep and see what it is that I'm doing wrong. Cause obviously it's something that I'm not doing right. Even if I think I'm doing something right, I wasn't, I wasn't doing the right thing. So now I'm like doing the right thing to the best of my ability so I could become whole. She's also sharing her year long transformation spiritually and physically reversing cosmetic surgery. Now I'm just going by faith. I'm not even really going by like the Black China way or like the Angela way. Let me just let God lead me. Like trusting in God in every step that you take and not trying to figure it out like for yourself. At number four. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Big news from your favorite burger franchise. Yo, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell uniting on NBC's Tonight Show to deliver the official announcement. Now looky here, Fluffer Nutter. The name is Lester Oaks, construction worker, and I'm hangry. That means I'm hungry and I'm angry. Yeah, I learned that on the intranet. But we've seen hints of this coming, even right here on Studio 5. I can't let you go without asking because I'm hearing buzz. Is there another good burger coming? Are we gonna see something happening? <laughs> Your partner in crime uh -oh, seems to be hinting something's coming. I'll say this, okay? Uh, good burger is always open and we're open for deliveries right now. Okay. <laughs> How exciting is this? Though? Such a blessing, man. It's unbelievable. Bro. We're gonna shoot it this summer and it'll be out soon. Well, that begins our countdown and brings us to our first musical feature. It is a reality TV show for those looking for a gospel beat. The series is called Grown in Gospel and it follows the children of famous gospel singers. These young adults, though, are striving and struggling to chart their own path in the music industry. And there are many highs and lows in this six-part series, whose cast includes Tasha Page Lockhart, Nakia Cole Branch, Elijah Connor, and three others who are sitting down with us to share the series. When it comes to the music scene in Detroit. Detroit gospel scene, it's just like we're known for gospel music. Detroit is just that place. Growing up in the industry, growing up to sharing our parents with y'all. I am the daughter of Fred Hammond. I was literally born into gospel music. Well, I'm not a gospel singer. Preacher's kid, PK. We all grew up in the same church. This generation of gospel is different because we're more free to just be ourselves. I call it Mario Wine. If Mario is overseeing the project, I'm not working on it. We are the children of legend. Now, all of you are navigating this industry and your friendship with ups, downs, highs, and lows. What's been the most difficult part for you in telling this story and being a part of this brief? The most difficult part would be honoring the legacy that my dad and the, the trail that he's blazed. I want to make him proud. I want to first make God proud, mm. um, but at the same time be true to myself, which in many ways looks a lot different than what the church of old um, has set you know, traditions and standards for. So the hardest part for me was finding that balance. Um, that was the most challenging part, just going against the grain and just stepping out on faith despite all odds. Nakia, this forces all of you to be vulnerable. I'm curious, what made you say yes? It's an honor to be part of my family legacy. However, I wanted to establish my identity. I just wanted to just be myself, the BTS queen that I am, and, and kind of just give you guys what it is to be who I am, but then also just 
kind of separated as to being Dorinda Clark Cole's daughter, but Dorinda Clark Cole's daughter is doing things. Tasha, what's it like to try and step out from mom's shadow? Well, I don't really feel like I'm in her shadow. Good deal. Um, <laughs> I'm always a student, so if you watch it, you'll see me looking at her and missing cues and, oh, I'm supposed to come in right here, but I'm so fascinated with the woman who taught me everything that I know. So I'm mm. like, you know, I'm not in her shadow, but I have the privilege and opportunity to share stages with my mother. Mm. You know what I mean? And so I just, I thank God for that alone. I love that. Elijah, what's it been like navigating the R&B world with um, such strong parents of faith? I can only imagine the dynamics and the conversations. <laughs> Oh man, uh, well, every day my, my dad is still texting me, what is the profit of man to gain the whole world and lose the Uh So, I, but you know, um, I just figured, you know, I'm singing about love. God is love. Listen, I'm, I'm not going to preach, at least not right now. However, I feel like the church has prepared me for this, though. And some of your greatest R&B singers came from out of the church. I love it. Shayna, tell me about the friendship. What's united the six of you? Uh, music and church. We have so many stories. It's just incredible. Um, and it made recording this series uh, very easy and uh, effortless. Mm. Jay Brooks, I'll let you have the last word. What are you most excited about Excited about as this series is released? And what are you um, most fearful of, if anything, as it's released? <laughs> You know, I don't really have a lot of fear about mm -hmm. it. I think that is a um, shared thought for all of us that how you feel about us is really none of our business. Wow. You know, these are our story. It's our truth. It's our reality. And, you know, we are um, being bold and sharing it with people. We're being bold and being transparent with people. And, you know, I think the good is gonna outweigh the bad. So I'm excited, you know, to see the people that say, Hey, I connected with that. You went through that? That's crazy. I went through that. You mm -hmm. saw that, you experienced that. I had some of those same feelings. So I'm excited just to touch the people and to meet the people who really, um, the show translates to what they're actually going through in their lives. I want to dig into where I am. I want this to translate through my music. Maybe I just don't have what it takes. I gotta deliver. And you can catch Grown and Gospel right now on WeTV as well as streaming on the All Black platform. Still to come. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. Gotta turn it around. With a music milestone of more than a million streams. Oh, man, it's going well. Recording artists. And Savior, we're coming. Artist John Reddick joins us. At number three, Grey's Anatomy is now the longest running primetime medical drama in American TV history. ABC just renewed it for a 20th season. Star Ellen Pompeo left the show in the mid season premiere, but she'll be back one more time for the season 19 finale in May. At number two. I love the, the Lord. Whitney Houston fans got something new from the late artist this weekend. Her family released a new album, a gospel album, with six never released recordings. The project is called I Go to the Rock. What was it that gospel meant to her? This is uh, who Whitney was. I mean, who, who she is today. Uh, we grew up in that in that environment. This was Whitney's. Uh, this was her 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 life. And with the new project comes a Whitney television special on the Up Network. I know from whence my help cometh. Join me, Cece Winans, as we discover Whitney's deep faith and love of gospel music. I go to the rock. The gospel music of Whitney Houston. That's number three and two in this week's countdown. We'll have one more to share in just a little bit. With that, welcome back to Studio 5. Right now, we want to take you back to Toby Mac's 
Hits Deep Tour to catch up with another one of the artists on the road with him these days. John Reddick saw massive success with his first single, God Turn It Around, and then his first full-length album, also called God Turn It Around. His music recently reached a milestone of a million streams on Spotify and continues to climb. Give it up for Mr. John Reddick. I'm praying God come and turn this thing around. And then you'll say this, God turn it around. God so John, here we are at Toby Max Hits Deep Tour. How's it going? Oh man, it's going well. God turn it around, yeah. God turn it around, see. God turn it around. Being able to be on the tour, doing worship, especially with the wave of worship that's happening across the country. God is doing something oh, say right now. A worship pastor from Durham, North Carolina, now topping music charts and performing at arenas. Tell me about this journey. How did you get here? Man, I, I would say growing up, I, I used to envision these concerts, <laughs> these big concerts or whatever, and I just, it was just a dream. I did not plan on actually doing this. I, I, I tried to tell God, I'm not going to do this, you know, I'm, I'm done with music, I'm, I'm not going to make any money by doing it, but uh, God just had his way of one up in me. Uh, my last time I was like, I quit, I'm not doing music. Somebody comes while I'm doing devotion in my kid's school, she's like, hey, God told me, she literally said, God told me that I was supposed to help you in this music thing. That person was Sheryl Crow, and so I, the biggest thing I think that taught me in that moment was what his purpose was for me. Um, it taught me, I learned more about what he's trying to call me to do. Say you. And now the K-Love number one song in 2022 with God Turn It Around. Talk about the story behind that song. The way the story goes, I was literally just calling my dad. We don't usually spend a lot of time on the phone, maybe five minutes tops. I'm calling on the name that changes everything. What was happening was we were sharing these stories about things that had happened to us in our lives. And um, there were some heavy things, you know, but I remember God using these moments to actually help us heal. And at the end of the conversation, I was literally in, in these tears of joy, like, wow, God, you really, I just remember saying, looking up to the ceiling, and I said, God, you really do turn things around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. God, turn it around. I know you can. Now, your newest single is I Believe It. What was the writing process behind that single? I didn't realize this until I looked back, but I had evidently been in a season of like this proclamation, like I believe, not just your word, but I believe that something will change. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in the resurrection. I believe he's coming back again. The beginning of it was birthed out of this idea of believing that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. Again, John Reddick saw massive success with his first single, God Turn It Around, and then his first full-length album of the same name. Both are available right now, wherever you stream, download, or purchase your music. Now is a good time to share a story in pictures. Here's this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Get a glimpse at a journey with Andrea Bocelli. It's a musical special coming to theaters for a limited run next week a beautiful production of he and his wife on a pilgrimage through the Tuscan countryside in Italy, while meeting some of their favorite performers along the way, like Tori Kelly, Taya, and Torin Wells, who each sings beautiful worship from incredible locations like magnificent Italian cathedrals. This panoramic preview is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Just moments away. A new year and a new project from Passion Music. 
What's the secret sauce, if you will? How is Passion um, able to put out a new album annually? The winds of worship blowing. Yeah, the doors of heaven open. It's such a team effort. See what the team is sharing with I've Witnessed It coming up next. Welcome back to Studio 5. For more than 20 years, the Passion Conference has been uniting thousands of students in worship, prayer, and justice with their focus fixed on Jesus. The conference has also given birth to multiple albums, and this year, the project is called I've Witnessed It. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life in it. So Take me back to the recording. This is all live. Where were you? When was it happening? Describe the atmosphere. Set the scene, if you will. Passion has, for years, brought together 18 and 25-year-olds um, for a conference at the beginning of every year. And we would love to help them understand, hey, you are here because Jesus has created you. He wants a relationship with you. And your greatest purpose in life is to know him and to make him known. They down your life to rescue. That's where this record came from. It is, I love it because you can hear all of these college students singing their praises to Jesus. And so it's special to me. But even death was not the end. You I don't think that the songwriting is complete until you have the voices of the people on them. Mm. And so that's one of my favorite things about this record is that you can just hear these college students and their desperation and their hunger for Jesus. The title, I've Witnessed It, what allowed that to surface as the title track and what people are listening to right now? You know, witness is not a word that a lot of us use these days. Like, it feels like it's more of like an old school, like evangelical <laughs> word that a lot of people used to use, but we don't anymore. Um, but I love what Eugene Peterson says about it. He says a witness is someone who is not at the center, but points to or names what is at the center. And so I believe as children of God and the followers of Jesus, that's our role, is that we get to point to what's at the center, which is Jesus Christ. I've seen mm -hmm. his goodness. I've seen him come through time and time again. And so it's a song that helps us remember those days and also believe for it in the future. Believe like, okay, I've seen it. God's come through for me always. It may not have always looked like what I thought, but mm -hmm. I can believe that I'm going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And so I'm going to believe that I can see it again and again and again. And so... Therefore, he's worthy of my praise. One that we've already been able to hear is all about you. And is that is that how the conference opened? Oh, man. Christian wrote that it really encompasses what like what passion is about you know it's mm -hmm. all about Jesus it always has been always will be that's what our lives are about that's what why we sing that's why we write these songs is because they're always about Jesus Every story. It's all about you. how are you feeling about this project honestly it's one of my favorites in a long time and to me, this record as a whole has just felt like riding a wave and just felt like the wind of the spirit is behind it. And that's always encouraging, I think, for me. And so I just want, you know, I hope that it just puts new and fresh words in the mouths of people and gives them hope as they worship Jesus. What's it like to see your lyrics come out of people's mouths? You know, it's crazy, first of all. It, <laughs> it's just like, wait, what? But also, like, I totally and 100% can say that I am just a conduit, that I just feel mm. like this is not from me, it is just through me. And so I just think it's like, okay, Jesus put those lyrics in someone else's mouth to sing back to him, and I just think that's beautiful. So I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life in. Well, 
Live Witness It is available right now wherever you stream, download, or purchase your music. And as you heard, it includes quite a few collaborations with other popular Christian artists. We need to take a break right here, but before we do, we've made it to the final story in this week's Uplifting Entertainment Countdown. Here is what's finishing at number one this week. At number one. Appreciate you sacrificing your Easter Sunday just to fly us home. You're welcome to ride up front. It looks like a space shuttle. That moon train the taxi. Turn your headset. You can listen to me talk to air traffic control. A Studio 5 first look at On a Wing and a Prayer, a film streaming this Easter weekend based on the miraculous true story of Doug White. I know that you turned down interviews from Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, and you turned down film offers. Why this one? Why did you say yes? Because most of those interviews came within, requests came within 24 to 48 hours after the incident. I really wasn't in the mood to talk to anybody for a year. It was Easter Sunday 2009 when the pharmacist was forced to land a plane after his pilot died with only him and his family on board. Climb and maintain one four thousand. Aren't you supposed to repeat back what he just... Joe. Miami Center. Is anyone there? Say your tail number and intention. Doug, what's going on? I've got an emergency up here. My wife and daughters are on this plane. I need you to stop a plane crash. On a Wing and a Prayer begins streaming on Amazon Easter Sunday, produced by Roma Downey. General audiences everywhere, everywhere will be touched and inspired by it, but particularly audiences of faith will be reminded once again of the power of prayer and how extraordinary our God is. Welcome back to Studio 5. Music fuels this production every week, and this week it's something new from Dante Bo. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Demons is what's playing in my ear. I've had demons underneath my bed Whispering bad things into my head Telling me to keep the lies low they ain't trying to be exposed like that Shadows dancing on my walls But they gonna have to let me go Oh Again, that is Demons from friend of Studio 5, Dante Bo, a new single from his new record label. On that musical note, we are just about out of time, so this is a great time to look ahead to one of the stories we're working to bring you on next week's edition of Studio 5. We need a new coach. A one, two, three, let's! I'm looking at it. Now the world will tell you that it's all about winning. See, I expect us to become a family. You are a disruptor. We're getting the story behind the film, Running the Bases. I have seen a lot of baseball seasons come and go around here, but there's something special about this one. And what do you think so special? You. You play Sam in the film, correct? Correct. You know, uh, first of all, the story is a very fun one, so people will have a good time as they watch this film. But for it to be such fun, it's also a very much a message film. Do what I cannot do, Father. This team is yours. Your job description at the school reads coach, not pastor. Hope you'll join us for that story and so much more. We'll have it all for you come next week. Before we say goodbye today, we've got time for just one more thing, and that is today's final word. We're giving it to recording artist John Reddick. So now if John could go back in time and give some advice to that little boy, little John, what would you say to him? I love how the Bible talks about we're all these different parts of one whole, right? Um, and maybe a lot of my life I've spent time as a part in the community of other parts that were more like, they. I was the odd man out. <laughs> so, um, so if you never know that other parts like yours exist, then you almost tell yourself that you're doing the wrong thing. I'd say keep dreaming. No matter what people tell you, just keep dreaming. 
John Reddick, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you, and then please come on back. See where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching.